Hey, what's up? I just got a uh, first bit of my Earth tattoo done for my family name being Hazer and uh, that number being 52 and Earth also being 52. Sorry about the shine on it. I've got some aqua for whatever that stuff's called on it, so it's a little bit uh, greasy. Uh, we were able to do part of the coloring today and all of the lining for it. Um, when it gets done, it's going to be looking more like this, so it'll be a little bit more uh, defined with the land masses with the coloring, but I think it looks pretty good so far. It barely hurt at all, and um, I'm really pleased with the design. This might be one of the last tattoos I ever get in my lifetime because uh, it's symbolic for me and that's what I wanted to do. So um, right now I'm going to read some facts about Earth and uh, just do that for everybody. First I'm going to vape really quick. I think this looks badass though. <laughs> it goes well with all my other tattoos. All right, Earth, fast facts. This is from National Geographic. Earth is the third planet from the sun and the fifth largest in the solar system. Earth is 92,955,820 miles or 149,597,800 miles or 149,597,891 kilometers away from the sun. At 7,917.5 miles or 12,742 kilometers, Earth's diameter is just a few hundred kilometers larger than that of Venus. The four seasons are the result of Earth's axis of rotation being tilted more than 23 degrees. And I've got 23 for my birthday on my uh, middle finger there. Um, additionally, 52 is also the number of weeks in a year, among other things that I know and I've posted before. The length of a year on Earth is 365 days, 6 hours, and 16 minutes. The length on a day of Earth is 23 hours and 56 minutes. Oceans at least 2.5 miles or 4 kilometers deep cover nearly 70% of Earth's surface. The minimum weather temperature on Earth is negative 126 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 187.8 degrees Celsius and the maximum weather temperature on Earth is 136 degrees Fahrenheit or 57.8 degrees Celsius. Fresh water exists in the liquid phase only within a narrow temperature span of 32 to 212 degrees Fahrenheit or 0 to 100 degrees Celsius. This temperature span is especially narrow and contrasted with a full range of temperatures found within the solar system from negative 400 to 900 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 300 to 500 degrees Celsius. The presence of and distribution of water vapor in the atmosphere is responsible for much of Earth's weather. This is about the protective atmosphere. I really like the look of this actually. Near the surface, an ocean of air that consists of 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and 1% other ingredients envelops us. This atmosphere affects Earth's long-term climate and short-term local weather, it shields us from nearly all harmful radiation coming from the sun, and protects us from meteors as well. Satellites have revealed that the upper atmosphere actually swells by day and contracts by night due to solar activity. Our planet's rapid spin and molten nickel-iron nickel core give rise to a magnetic field which the solar wind distorts into a teardrop shape. The solar wind is a stream of charged particles continuously ejected from the sun. The magnetic field does not fade off into space but has definite boundaries. When charged, particles from the solar wind become trapped in Earth's magnetic field. They collide with air molecules above our planet's magnetic poles. These air molecules then begin to glow and are known as aurora, or the northern and southern lights. Um, the Earth's rotation is gradually slowing. The de de deceleration is happening almost imperceptibly at approximately 17 milliseconds per 100 years, 
although the rate at which it occurs is not perfectly uniform. This has the effect of lengthening our days, but it happens so slowly that it could be as much as 140 million years before the length of a day will have increased to 25 hours. The Earth was once believed to be the center of the universe. Due to the apparent movements of the sun and planets in the relation to their viewpoint, ancient scientists insisted that the Earth remained static, whilst other celestial bodies traveled in circular orbits around it. Eventually, the view that the sun was the center of the universe was postulated by Copernicus, though this was also not the case. Earth has a powerful magnetic field. The phenom phenomenon is caused by nickel-iron core of the planet coupled with its rapid rotation. This field protects the Earth from its effects of the solar wind. There is only one natural satellite of the planet Earth. As a percentage of the size of the body of its orbits, the moon is the largest satellite of any planet in our solar system. In real terms, however, it is only the fifth largest natural satellite. Earth is the only planet not named after a god. The other seven planets in our solar system are all named after Roman gods or goddesses. Although only Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn were named during ancient times because they were visible to the naked eye, the Roman method of naming planets was retained after the discovery of Uranus and Neptune. The Earth is the densest planet in the solar system. This varies according to the part of the planet. For example, the metallic core is denser than the crust. The average density of Earth is approximately 5.52 grams per cubic centimeter. Cool. Anyways, um, the second little bit of that was from spacefacts.com, space-facts.com. Uh, so anyways, I just wanted to show you this again, and I really like the work that's been done on it so far. I think it'll look a lot better with the shading finally done, but basically it didn't hurt at all. This is a pretty easy area of the body to get tattoos on. It doesn't really look like much of anything right now um, with some of the shading, but uh, I'm sure that when it's done, it'll look a lot more like an actual defined uh, landmass. But from far away, it looks pretty damn good. So that's what it is. That's what I got today. I'm uh, happy with this tattoo, and I really like it, and uh, I'm looking forward to where it goes uh, tomorrow, and uh, that'll be what it is. So have a good one. Hey, what's up? I'm going to read a little bit more about Earth, and uh, I cleaned up this tattoo a little bit so it's not as um, messy, but uh, <clears throat> I'm going to play Perfect Circle, the acoustic sessions, and read a little bit about Earth from Wikipedia. Earth is the third planet from the sun and the only astronomical object in the universe known to harbor life. According to the radiometric dating and other sources of evidence, Earth formed over 4.5 billion years ago. Earth's gravity interacts with other space objects in space, especially the Sun, and the Moon, Earth's only natural satellite. Earth revolves around the Sun in 365.26 days, a period known as an Earth year. During this time, Earth rotates about its axis about 366.26 times. Earth's axis of rotation is tilted with respect to its orbital plane producing seasons on Earth. The gravitational interaction between Earth and the Moon causes ocean tides, stabilizes Earth's orientation on its axis, and gradually slows its rotation. Earth is the densest planet in the solar system and, a, and the largest of the four terrestrial planets. Earth's lithosphere, lithosphere is divided into several rigid tectonic plates which migrate across the surface over periods of many millions of years. About 71% of Earth's surface is covered with water, mostly by oceans. The remaining 29% is land consisting of continents and islands that together have many lakes, rivers, and other sources of water that contribute to the hydrosphere. The majority of Earth's polar regions are covered in ice, including the Antarctic ice sheet and the sea ice of the Arctic ice pack. Earth's interior remains active with a solid iron inner core, a liquid outer core that generates the Earth's magnetic field, and a convecting mantle that drives plate tectonics. Within the first billion years of Earth's history, life appeared in the oceans and began to affect the Earth's atmosphere and surface, leading to proliferation of aerobic and anaerobic organisms. Some geological evidence indicates that life may have arisen as much as 4.1 billion years ago. 
Since then, the combination of Earth's distance from the Sun, physical properties, and geological history have allowed life to evolve and thrive. In the history of Earth, biodiversity has gone through long periods of expansion, occasionally punctuated by mass extinction events. Over 99% of all species that ever lived on Earth are extinct. Estimates of the number of species on Earth today vary widely. Most species have not been described. Over 7.6 billion humans live on Earth and depend on its biosphere and natural resources for their survival. Humans have developed diverse societies and cultures. Politically, the world has about 200 sovereign states. Name and etymology. The modern English word Earth developed from the wide variety of Middle English forms, which derive from an Old English noun most often spelled Eero. Eero. It has cognates in every Germanic language, and their Proto-Germanic root has been reconstructed as Erpo. In its earliest appearances, Eero was already being used to translate the many senses of Latin, Terra, and Greek. Uh, gay as ground, its soil, dry land, the human world, the surface of the world, including the sea, and the globe itself. As with Terra and Gaia, Earth was a personified goddess in Germanic paganism. The Angles ha were listed by Tacitus as among the devotees of Nerthus. The later Norse mythology, including Yoro, the giantess, often given as the mother of Thor. Originally, Earth was written in lowercase, and from early Middle English, its de definite sense as the globe was expressed as the Earth. By early Modern English, many nouns were capitalized, and the Earth became and often remained the Earth, particularly when referenced among the other heavenly bodies. More recently, the name is sometimes simply given as Earth by analogy with the names of other planets. House styles now vary. Oxford spelling recognizes the lowercase form as the most common, with the capitalized and an acceptable variant. Blair Convention capitalized, capitalizes Earth when appearing as a name, example Earth's atmosphere, but writes it in lowercase when preceded by the, the atmosphere of the Earth. It almost always appears in lowercase in colloquial expressions such as, what on Earth are you doing? Chronology. Formation. The oldest material found in the solar system is dated to 4.5672 plus 0 0.006 billion years ago. Baya. By 4.54 plus or minus 0 0.04 Baya, the primordial Earth has formed. The bodies in the solar system formed and evolved with the sun. In theory, a solar nebula partitions a volume out of the molecular cloud by gravitational collapse, which begins to spin and flatten into a circumstellar disk. And then the planets grow out of that disk with the sun. A nebula contains gas, ice grains, and dust, including primordial nucleotides, nucleides, including, according to nebular theory, planetismals formed by accretion with the primordial Earth taking 10 to 20 million years, mice, to form. The subject of research is the formation of the moon, some 4.53 Baya. A leading hypothesis is that it formed by accretion from material loosened from Earth after a Mars-sized object named Theia hit Earth. In the view, the mass of Theia was approximately 10% of Earth. It hit Earth with a glancing blow and some of its mass merged with Earth. Between approximately 4.1 to 3.8 Baya, Numerous asteroid impacts during the late heavy bombardment caused significant changes to the greater surface environment of the moon and, by inference, to that of Earth. Geological history. Earth's atmosphere and oceans were formed by volcanic activity and outgassing. Water vapor from these sources condensed into the oceans, augmented by water and ice from asteroids, protoplanets, and comets. In this model, atmospheric greenhouse gases kept the oceans from freezing when the newly forming sun at only 70% of its current luminosity. By 3.5 Baya, Earth's magnetic field was established, which helped prevent the atmosphere by being shipped away by the solar wind. A crust formed when the molten outer layer of Earth cooled to form a solid. Two models that explain land mass propose either a steady growth to the present day forms, or more likely a rapid growth early in Earth's history followed by a long-term steady continental area. 
Continents formed by plate tectonics, a process ultimately driven by the continuous loss of heat from Earth's interior. Over the period of hundreds of years, hundreds of millions of years, the supercontinents have assembled and broken apart. Roughly 750 million years ago, Maya, uh, one of the earliest known continents, Rodinia, began to break apart. The continents later recombined to form Panotia, 600 to 504 to Maya, and finally Pangaea, which also broke apart 180 Maya. The present pattern of ice ages began about 40 Maya and then intensified during the Pliocene about 3 Maya. I'm not saying that word right, but that's fine. High latitude <laughs> regions have since undergone repeated cycles of glaciation and thaw, repeating about every 40,000 to 100,000 years. The last continental glaciation ended 10,000 years ago. Origin of life and evolution. Main articles, abiogenesis Genesis, and Evolutionary History of Life. Chemical reactions led to the first self-replicating molecules about 4 billion years ago. A half billion years later, the last common ancestor of all current life arose. The evolution of photosynthesis allowed the sun's energy to be harvested directly by life forms. The resultant molecular oxygen, O2, accumulated in the atmosphere, and due to interaction with ultraviolet solar radiation, formed a protective ozone layer O3 in the upper atmosphere. The incorporation of smaller cells within larger ones resulted in the development of complex cells called eukaryotes. True molecular organisms formed as cells within colonies became increasingly specialized. Aided by the absorption of harmful ultraviolet radiation by the ozone layer, life colonized Earth's surface. Among the earliest fossil evidence for life is microbial mat fossils found in 3.48 billion year old sandstone in Western Australia. Biogenic graphite found in 3.7 billion year old metas diametary rocks in Western Greenland and remains of biotic material found in 4.1 billion year old rocks in Western Australia. The earliest direct evidence of life on Earth is contained in 3.45 billion year old Australian rocks showing fossils of microorganisms. During the Neo-Protozoic 750-540 to 540 Mia, much of Earth might have been covered on ice. This hypothesis has been termed Snowball Earth, and it is of particular interest because it preceded the Cambrian explosion when multicellular life forms significantly increased in complexity. Following the Cambrian explosion 535 Mia, there have been five mass extinctions. The most recent such event was 66 Meow, when an asteroid impact triggered the extinction of the non-avian dinosaurs and other large reptiles, but spared some small animals, such as mammals, which at the time resembled shrews. Mammalian life has diversified over the last 66 Meows, and several million years ago, an, Af an African ape-like animal, such as Orintungenesis, gained the ability to stand upright. This facilitated tool and encouraged communication that provided the nutrition and stimulation needed for a larger brain which led to the evolution of humans. The development of agriculture then and then civilization led to humans having the influence on earth and nature and the quality of other life forms that continues to this day. Future Earth's expected long-term future is tied to that of the Sun. Over the next 1.1 Bs, solar luminosity will increase by 10%, and over the next 3.5 Bs by 40%. The Earth's increasing surface temperature will accelerate the inorganic carbon cycle, reducing CO2 concentration to levels lethally low for plants, 10 parts per million for C4 photosynthesis, and approximately 500 to 900 Mes. The lack of vegetation will result in the lack of loss of oxygen in the atmosphere, making animal life impossible. After another billion years, all surface water will have disappeared, and the mean global temperature will reach 70 Celsius, 158 Fahrenheit. From that point, the Earth is expected to be habitable for another 500 Ma, possibly up to 2.3 Ga, if nitrogen is removed from the atmosphere. Even if the sun were eternal and stable, 27% of the water in the modern oceans will descend in the mantle 
from 1 billion years due to reduced steam venting from mid-ocean ridges. Some will evolve to become a red giant in about 5 billion years. Uh, models predict that the sun will expand to roughly 1 AU, 150 million kilometers, 930 million miles, about 250 times its present radius. Earth's fate is less clear. As a red giant, the sun will lose roughly 30% of its mass, so without tidal effects, Earth will move to an orbit of 107 AU, 250 million kilometers, 160 million miles from the sun when the star reaches its maximum radius. Most, if not all, remaining life will be destroyed by the sun's increased luminosity, peaking at about 5,000 times its present level. A 2008 simulation indicates that Earth's orbit will eventually decay due to its tidal effects and drag, causing it to the center of the sun's atmosphere and be vaporized. Physical Characteristics Shape The Earth is approximately orbital spheroidal. Due to the rotation, the Earth is flattened at the poles and bulging around the equator. The diameter of the Earth at the equator is 43 kilometers, 27 miles larger than the pole-to-pole -pole diameter. Thus, the point on the surface farther from Earth's center of mass is the summit of the equatorial Chimborazo volcano, volcano in Ecuador. The average diameter of the reference spheroid is 12,742 kilometers, or 7,918 miles. Local topography deviates from this idealized spheroid. Although on a global scale, these deviations are small compared to Earth's radius. The maximum deviation of only 0.17% of the Mariana Trench, 10,911 meters, 35,797 feet below local sea level, whereas Mount Everest, 8,848 meters, 29,029 feet above local sea level, represents a deviation of 0.14%. In geodesy, the exact shape that Earth's ocean would adopt in the absence of land and perturbations such as tides and winds is called a geoid. More precisely, the geoid is the surface of gravitational equipotential at mean sea level. Chemical composition. Earth's mass is approximately 5.97 times 10 to the 24th kilograms, 5,970 YG. It is composed mostly of iron, 32.1%, oxygen, 30.1%, silicon, 15.1%, magnesium, 13.9%, sulfur, 2.9%, nickel, 1.8%, calcium, 1.5%, and aluminum, 1.4%, with the remaining 1.2% consisting of trace amounts of other elements. Due to mass segregation, the core region is estimated to be primarily composed of iron, 88.8%, with smaller amounts of nickel, 5.8%, sulfur, 4.5%, and less than 1% trace elements. The most common rock constituents of the crust are nearly all oxides, chlorine, sulfur, and fluoride, with are an important exception to this, and their total amount in any rock is usually less than 1%. Over 99% of the crust is composed of 11 oxides, principally silica, alumina, iron oxides, lime, magnesia, potash, and soda. Internal structure. Earth's interior, like that of other terrestrial planets, is divided into layers by the chemical or physical rheological properties. The outer layer is a chemically distinct silicate solid crust which is underlain by a highly viscous solid mantle. The crust is separated from the mantle by the Mohorovicic discontinuity. The thickness of the crust varies from about 6 kilometers 3.7 miles under the ocean to 30 to 50 kilometers 19 to 31 miles for the continents. The crust and the cold, rigid top of the upper mantle are collectively known as the lithosphere, and it is of the lithosphere that their tectonic plates are composed. Beneath the lithosphere is the asthenosphere, a relatively low viscosity layer of, on which the lithosphere rides. Important changes in crystal structure within the mantle occurred at 410 to 660 kilometers, 250 to 410 miles below the surface, spanning a transition zone that separates the upper and lower mantle. Beneath the mantle, an extremely low viscosity liquid outer core lies above a solid inner core. 
Earth's inner core might rotate at a slightly higher angular velocity than the remainder of the planet, advancing by 0.1 to 0.5 degrees per year. This radius of the inner core is about one-fifth of that of Earth. Um, so, heat. Earth's internal heat comes from a combination of residual heat from planetary accretion, about 20%, and heat produced through radioactive decay, about 80%. Major heat producing isotopes within Earth are potassium 40, uranium 238, and thorium 232. At the center, the temperature may be up to 6,000 degrees Celsius, 10,830 degrees Fahrenheit, and the pressure could reach 360 GPA, 52 million psi, because much of the heat is provided by radioactive decay. Scientists postulate that Earth, early in Earth's history, before isotopes with short half lives were depleted, Earth's heat production was much higher, at approximately 3 GYR. Twice the present day heat would have been produced, increasing the rates of mantle convection and plate tectonics, and allowing the production of uncommon in igneous rocks such as comatites that are rarely formed today. The mean heat loss from Earth is 87 million WM to M to the negative 2 for a global heat loss of 4.42 times 10 to 13 W. Not really sure what that means. A portion of the core's thermal energy is transported towards the crust by mantle plumes, a form of convection consisting of up upwellings of higher temperature rock. These plumes can produce hot spots and flood basalts. More of the heat in Earth is lost through plate tectonics by mantle upwelling associated with mid ocean ridges. The final major mode of heat loss is through conduction through the lithosphere, the majority of which occurs under the oceans because the crust there is much thinner than that of the continents. Tectonic plates. Earth's mechanically rigid outer layer, the lithosphere, is divided into tectonic plates. These plates are rigid segments that move relative to one another at three boundary types. Convergent boundaries, two plates come together, and divergent boundaries, Two plates are pulled apart and transform boundaries. Two plates slide past one another laterally. Along these plate boundaries, earthquakes, volcanic activity, mountain building. Sorry, my uh, camera ran out of space. I put some aquaphor on this and let it rest for a little bit, but uh, so it's a little bit glossy. Anyways, I'm going to continue with the uh, perfect circle acoustic sessions and uh, continue reading this. Swear so on tectonic plates. As the tectonic plates migrate, oceanic crust is subducted <coughs> under the leading edges of the plates at convergent boundaries. <coughs> at the same time, the up upwelling of mantle material as divergent boundaries creates mid-ocean ridges. Combinations of these processes recycles the oceanic crust back into the mantle. Due to this recycling, most of the ocean floor is less than 10, 100 mil million years old. The oldest oceanic crust is located in the western Pacific and is estimated to be about 200 million years old. By comparison, the oldest dated continental crust is 4,030 million years old. Or Ma. I'm not sure what Ma is. Anyways, the seven major plates are the Pacific, North American, Eurasian, African, Antarctic, Indo-Australian, and Southern South American. Other notable plates include the Arabian Plate, the Caribbean Plate, and the Nazca Plate off the west coast of South America, and the Scotia Plate in the southern Atlantic Ocean. The Australian Plate fused with the Indian Plate between 50 and 55 Mya, MYA. The fastest moving plates are the Oceanic Plates, with the Cocos Plate advancing at a rate of 75 mm-a in 3.0 in per year inches per year, and the Pacific Plate moving 52 to 69 millimeters per A, or 2.0 to 2.7 inches per year. At the other extreme, the slowest moving plate is the Eurasian Plate, progressing at a typical rate of 21 millimeters per annual, or 0.83 inches per year. Surface. The total surface area of Earth is about 510 million kilometers squared, or 197 million square miles. Of this, 70.8%, or 361.13 million kilometers squared, 
or 139.43 million square miles, is below sea level and covered by ocean water. Below the ocean surface are much of the continental shelf, mountains, volcanoes, ocean trenches, submarine canyons, oceanic plateaus, abysmal plains, abyssal plains, and a globe-spinning mid-ocean ridge system. The remaining 29.2%, or 148.94 million kilometers squared, 57.51 million square miles not covered by water has terrain that varies greatly from place to place and consists of mountains, deserts, plains, plateaus, and other landforms. Tectonics and erosions, volcanic eruptions, flooding, weathering, glaciation, the growth of coral, coral reefs, and meteorite impacts are among the processes that constantly reshape the Earth's surface over geological time. The continental crust consists of lower density materials such as igneous rocks, granite, and andesite. Less common is basalt, a denser rock that is primary constituent of the ocean floors. Sedimentary rock is formed from the accumulation of sediment that becomes buried and compacted together. Nearly 75% of the continental surfaces are covered by sedimentary rocks, although they form about 5% of the crust. The third form of rock material found on Earth is metamorphic rock, which is created from the transformation of pre-existing rock types through high pressures, high temperatures, or both. The most abundant silicate minerals on Earth's surface include quartz, feldspar, Amph amphibole, mica, pyroxene, and olivine. Common carbonate materials include calcite found in limestone and dolomite. <clears throat> the elevation of land surfaces varies from the point of negative 418 mi um, miles or m meters or negative 1,371 feet at the Dead Sea to a maximum altitude of 8,848 meters or 29,029 feet at the top of Mount Everest. The mean height of land above sea level is about 797 meters or 2,615 feet. The pedosphere is the outermost layer of Earth's continental surface and is composed of soil and subject to soil formation processes. The total arable land is 10.9% of the land surface with 1.3% being permanent cropland. Close to 40% of Earth's land surface is used for agriculture, or an estimated 16.7 million kilometers squared, or 6.4 million square miles of cropland, and 33.5 million kilometers squared, or 12.9 million square miles of pasture land. <coughs> this is the hydrosphere. The abundance of water on Earth's surface is a unique feature that distinguishes the blue planet from other planets in the solar system. Earth's hydrosphere consists chiefly of the oceans, but technically includes all water surfaces in the world, including inland seas, lakes, rivers, and underground waters, down to a depth of 2,000 meters, 6,600 feet. The deepest underwater location is Challenger Deep in the Marina Trench in the Pacific Ocean with a depth of 10,911.4 meters, or 35,799 feet. The mass of the oceans is approximately 1.35 times 10 to the 18 metric tons, or about 1 uh, divided by 4,400 of Earth's total mass. The oceans cover an area of 361.8 million kilometers squared, 139.7 million square miles, with a mean depth of 3,682 meters, or 12,080 feet, resulting in an estimated volume of 1,001, whoops, excuse me, 1.332 billion kilometers cubed, or 320 million cubic miles. If all of the Earth's crustal surface were at the same elevation as a smooth sphere, the depth of the resulting world ocean would be 2.7 to 2.8 kilometers, or 1.68 to 1.74 miles. About 97.5% of the water is saline, and the remaining 2.5% is fresh water. Most fresh water, about 68.7%, is present as ice in the ice caps and glaciers. The average salinity of Earth's ocean is about 35 grams of salt per kilogram of seawater, 3.5% salt. <coughs> Most of this salt was released from volcanic activity or extracted from cool igneous rocks. The oceans are also a reservoir of, dis of dissolved atmospheric gases, which are essential for the survival of many aquatic life forms. Seawater has an important influence on the world's climate, with the oceans acting as a large heat reservoir. Shifts in the oceanic temperature distribution can cause significant weather shifts, such as the El Nino Southern Oscillation. 
Next is about atmosphere. The atmospheric pressure at Earth's sea levels averages 101.325 kPa or 14.696 psi with a scale height of about 8.5 kilometers or 5.3 miles. A dry atmosphere is composed of 78.084% nitrogen, 20.946% oxygen, 0.934 argon, and trace amounts of carbon dioxide and other gaseous molecules. Water vapor content varies between 0.01% and 4%, but averages about 1%. The height of the troposphere varies with latitude ranging between 8 kilometers 5 miles at the poles to 17 kilometers or 11 miles at the equator, with some variation resulting from weather and seasonal factors. Earth's biosphere has significantly altered its atmosphere. Oxygenetic photosynthesis evolved 2.7 GYA, forming the primarily nitrogen-oxygen atmosphere today. This change enabled the proliferation of aerobic organisms and indirectly the formation of the ozone layer due to the subsequent conversion of atmospheric O2 into O3. The ozone layer blocks ultraviolet solar radiation, permitting life and light. Other atmospheric functions important to life include transporting water vapor, providing useful gases, causing small meteors to burn before they strike the surface, and moderating temperature. The last phenomenon is known as the greenhouse effect. Trace molecules within the atmosphere serve to capture thermal energy emitted from the ground, thereby raising the temperature, average temperature. Water vapor, carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, and ozone are the primary ga greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. Without this heat tension effect, the average surface temperature would be negative 18 degrees Celsius or 0 degrees Fahrenheit. In contrast to the current plus 15 degrees Celsius, 59 degrees Fahrenheit, and life on Earth probably would not exist in its current form. In May 2017, glints of light seen as twinkling from an orbiting satellite a million miles away were found to be reflected light from ice crystals in the atmosphere. Weather and climate. Earth's atmosphere has no definite boundary, slowly becoming thinner and fading into outer space. Three quarters of the atmosphere's mass is contained within the first 11 kilometers or 6.8 miles of the surface. This lower la lowest layer is called the troposphere. Energy from the sun heats this layer and the surface below, causing expansion of the air. This lower density air then rises and is replaced by cooler, higher density air. <laughs> The result is atmospheric circulation that drives the weather and climate through redistribution of thermal energy. Primary atmospheric circulation bands consist of the tra trade winds in the equ equatorial region below 30 degrees latitude and the westerlies in the mid-latitudes between 30 degrees and 60 degrees. Ocean currents are also important factors in determining climate, particularly the thermohaline circulation that distributes thermal energy from the equatorial oceans to the polar regions. Water vapor generated through the surface evaporation is transported by circulatory patterns in the atmosphere. When atmospheric conditions permit an uplift of warm, humid air, this water condenses and falls to the surface as precipitation. Most of the water is then transported to lower elevations by river systems and usually returns to the oceans or deposited in the lakes. This water cycle is a vital mechanism for supporting life on land and a primary factor in the erosion of surface features over geological periods. Precipitation patterns vary widely, ranging from several meters of water per day to less than a millimeter. Atmospheric circulation, topographic features, and temperature differences determine the average precipitation that falls in each region. The amount of solar energy reaching Earth's surfaces decreases with increasing latitude. At higher latitudes, the sunlight re reaches the surface at lower angles, and it must pass through thicker columns of the atmosphere. As a result, the mean annual air temperature at sea level decreases by about 0.4 degrees Celsius to 0.7 degrees Fahrenheit per degree of latitude from the equator. Earth's surface can be subdivided into specific latitudinal belts of approximately homogeneous climate. Ranging from the equator to the polar regions, these are tropical or equatorial, subtropical, temperate, and polar climates. This latitudinal rule has several anomalies. Proximity to oceans moderates the climate 
For example, the Scandinavian Peninsula has more moderate climate than similarly northern latitudes of northern Canada. The wind enables this moderating effect. The windward side of the landmass experiences more moderation than the leeward side. In the northern hemisphere, the prevailing wind is west to east, and western coasts tend to be milder than eastern coasts. This is seen in eastern North America and western Europe where rough continental climates appear on the east coast on parallels with mild climates on the other side of the ocean. In the southern hemisphere, the prevailing wind is east to west and the eastern coast are milder. The distance from the earth to the sun varies. The earth is closest to the sun at per perihelion in January, which is summer in the southern hemisphere. It is furthest away at aphelion. In July, which is summer in the northern hemisphere, and only 93.55% of solar radiation from the sun falls on a given square area of land than at perihelion. Despite this, there are larger land masses in the northern hemisphere which are easier to heat than the seas. Consequently, summers are 2.3 degrees Celsius, 4 degrees Fahrenheit, warmer in the northern hemisphere than in the southern hemisphere under similar conditions. Climate is colder at high altitudes than at sea level because of the decreased air density. The common used Köppen climate classification system has five broad groups, humid tropics, arid, humid middle latitudes, continental, and cold polar, which are further divided into more specific subtypes. The Köppen system rates regions of terrain based on observed temperature and precipitation. The highest air temperature ever measured on Earth was 56.7 degrees Celsius or 134.1 degrees Fahrenheit in Furnace Creek, California in Death Valley in 1913. The lowest air temperature ever directly measured on Earth was negative 89.2 degrees Celsius, negative 1 to 128.6 degrees Fahrenheit at Vostok Station in 1983. But satellites that have used remote sensing to measure temperatures as low as negative 94.7 degrees Celsius, negative 138.5 degrees Fahrenheit in East Antarctica. These temperatures records are only measurements made with modern measurements instruments from the 20th century onwards and likely do not reflect the full range of temperature on Earth. I'm going to continue with upper atmosphere in just a moment. <coughs> <coughs> Okay, I'm going to continue reading now with uh, upper atmosphere. Above the troposphere, the atmosphere is usually divided into the stratosphere, mesosphere, and thermosphere. Each layer has a different lapsed rate, defining the rate of change in temperature with height. Above these, the exosphere thins out into the magnetosphere, where the geometric fields interact with the solar wind. Within the stratosphere is the ozone layer, a component that partially shields the surface from ultraviolet light and thus is important for life on Earth. The Kármán line, defined as 100 kilometers above Earth's surface, is a working definition for the boundary between the atmosphere and outer space. Thermal energy causes some of the mo molecules at the outer edge of the atmosphere to increase their velocity to the point where they can escape from Earth's gravity. This causes a slow but steady loss of the atmosphere into space because unfixed hydrogen has a low molecular mass, it ha can achieve escape velocity more readily, and it leaks into outer space at a greater rate than other gases. The leakage of hydrogen into space contributes to the shifting of Earth's atmosphere and surface from an initially reducing state to its current oxidizing one. Photosynthesis provides a source of free oxygen, but the loss of reducing agents such as hydrogen is thought to have been a ne necessary precondition for the widespread accumulation of oxygen in the atmosphere. Hence the ability of hydrogen to escape from the atmosphere may have influenced the nature of life that developed on Earth. In the current oxygen-rich atmosphere, most hydrogen is converted into water before it has an opportunity to escape. Instead, most of the hydrogen loss comes from the destruction of methane in the upper atmosphere. This is on gravitational field. The gravity of Earth is the acceleration that is imparted to objects due to the distribution of mass within the Earth. Near the Earth's surface, gravitational acceleration is approximately 9.8 uh, m divided by s squared, or 32 feet divided by s squared. Local differences in topography, geology, and deeper tectonic structure cause local and broad regional differences in the Earth's gravitational field known as gravity anomalies. <coughs> This is on magnetic field. 
The main part of Earth's magnetic field is generated in the core of the site of dynamo, a process that converts the kinetic energy of thermo thermo thermally and com compositionally driven convection into electrical and magnetic field energy. The field extends outwards from the core through the mantle and up to Earth's surface, where it is approximately a dipole. The poles of the dipole are located close to Earth's geographic poles at the equator of the magnetic field. The magnetic field strength at the surface is 3.05 times 10 to the negative 5t with global magnetic dipole movement of 7.91 times 10 to the 15t m cubed. The convection movements in the core are chaotic, the magnetic poles drift and periodically change alignment. This causes secular variation of the main field and the field reversals at irregular intervals arranging a few times every million years. The most recent reversal occurred approximately 700,000 years ago. This is on the, mag <coughs> this is on the magnetosphere. The extent of Earth's magnetic field in space defines the magnetosphere. Ions and electrons of the solar wind are deflected by the magnetosphere. Solar wind pressure compresses the day side of the magnetosphere to about 10 Earth radii. <coughs> and extends the night side magnetosphere into a long tail. Beside the velocity of the solar wind is greater than the speed at which waves propagate through the solar wind. <coughs> subsonic bow shock precedes the day side magnetosphere within the solar wind. Charged particles are contained within the magnetosphere. The plasmosphere is defined by low energy particles that essentially follow magnetic field lines as Earth rotates. The ring current is defined by medium energy particles that drift relative to the geometric field but with paths that are dominated by the magnetic field and the Van Allen radiation belt are formed by high energy particles whose motion is essentially random but otherwise contained by the magnetosphere. During magnetic storms and substorms, charged particles can be deflected from the outer magnetosphere and especially the magnetotail, directed along lines into Earth's ionosphere, where atmospheric atoms can be excited and ionized, causing the aurora. This deals with orbit and rotation. First comes rotation. Earth's rotation period relative to the Sun, its mean solar day, is 86,400 seconds of mean solar time. 86,400.0025 SI seconds. Because Earth's solar day is now slightly longer than it is was during the 19th century due to tidal deceleration, Earth day varies between 0 to 2 SI milliseconds longer. Earth's rotation period relative to the fixed stars called the stellar day by the International Earth Rotation and Reference Sur System Services, IERS, is 86,164.0989 seconds of mean solar time, UT1, or 23 to the H, 23 hours, 56 minutes, 4.0989 seconds. Earth's rotation period relative to the processing or moving mean vernal equinox, misnamed the sidereal day, is 86,164.0905 seconds of mean solar time, UT1, 23 hours, 56 minutes, 4.0905 seconds. Thus, the sidereal day is shorter than the stellar day by about 8.4 milliseconds. The length of the mean solar day in SI seconds is available from the IERS from, for the periods 1623 to 2005 and 1962 to 2005. Apart from meteors within the atmosphere and low orbiting satellites, the main apparent motion of celestial bodies in Earth's sky is the west at the rate of 15 degrees per hour equals 15 to the first minutes. For bodies near the celestial for bodies near the celestial equator, this is the equivalent to an apparent diameter of the sun or moon every two minutes. From Earth's surface, the apparent sizes of the sun and moon are approximately the same. This is orbit. <coughs> <clears throat> Earth orbits the Sun at an average distance of about 150 million kilometers, 93 million miles every 365.2564 mean solar days, or one sidereal year. This gives an apparent movement of the Sun eastward with respect to the stars at a rate of about 1 degree per day, which is one apparent Sun or Moon diameter every 12 hours. Due to this motion, on average it takes 24 hours a solar day Earth to complete a full rotation about its axis so that the Sun returns to the meridian. The orbital speed of Earth averages about 29.78 kilometers per second, 100, 
7,200 kilometers per hour, 66,600 miles per hour, which is fast enough to travel a distance equal to Earth's diameter, about 12,742 kilometers, 7,918 miles in seven minutes, and the distance to the moon, 3,800, 384,000 kilometers, 239,000 miles in about 3.5 hours. <clears throat> the moon and Earth orbit a common berry center every 27.32 days relative to the background stars. When combined with the Earth-Moon system's common orbit around the sun, the period of the synodic month from new moon to new moon is 29.53 days. Viewed from the celestial north pole, the motion of Earth, the moon, and the actual rotations are all counterclockwise. Viewed from the vantage point above the north pole of both the sun and the Earth, Earth orbits in counterclockwise direction around the sun. The orbital and axial planes are not precisely aligned. Earth's axis is tilted some 23.44 degrees from the perpendicular to the Earth's sun plane, the ecliptic, and the Earth-moon plane is tilted up to plus or minus 5.1 degrees against the Earth's sun plane. With this tilt, there are, would be an eclipse every two weeks. Uh, without this tilt, there would be an eclipse every two weeks, alternating between lunar eclipses and solar eclipses. The hill sphere, or the sphere of gravitational influence of the Earth, is about 1.5 million kilometers, or 930,000 miles in radius. This is the maximum distance at which Earth's gravitational influence is stronger than the more distant sun and planets. Objects must orbit the Earth within the radius where they can become unbound by the gravitational perturbation of the Sun. Earth along with the solar system is situated in the Milky Way and orbits about 28,000 light years from its center. It is about 20 light years above the galactic plane in the Orion arm. This deals with axial tilt and seasons. The actual tilt of the Earth is approximately 23.439281 degrees, with the axis of its orbital plane always pointing towards the celestial poles. Due to Earth's axial tilt, the amount of sunlight reaching any given point on the surface varies over the course of the year. It causes, this causes a seasonal change in climates, with summer in the northern hemisphere occurring when the Tropic of Cancer is facing the sun, and winter taking place when the Tropic of Capricorn is in the southern hemisphere facing the sun. During the summer, the, last, the days last longer and the sun climbs higher in the sky. In winter, the climate becomes cooler and the days shorter. In northern temperate latitudes, the sun rises north of true east during the summer solstice and sets north of true west, reversing the winter. The sun rises south of true east in the summer for the southern temperate zones and sets south in true west. Above the Arctic Circle, an extreme case is reached where there is no daylight at all for part of the year up to six months at the North Pole itself, a polar night. <clears throat> In the Southern Hemisphere, the situation is exactly reversed with the South Pole oriented opposite the direction of the North Pole. Six months earlier, this pole will experience a midnight sun, a day of 24 hours, again reversing with the South Pole. By the astronomical convention, the four seasons can be determined by the solstices, the points in the orbit of maximum axial tilt towards or away from the sun, and the equinoxes. When the direction of the tilt and the direction of the sun are perpendicular, in the northern hemisphere, winter solstice currently occurs around 21st of December, summer solstice is near 21st of June, spring equinox is around 20th of March, and autumnal equinox is about 22nd or 23rd of September. In the southern hemisphere, the situation is reversed with the summer and winter solstices exchanged and the spring and autumnal equinoxes date swapped. The angle of Earth's axial tilt is relatively stable over long periods of time. Its axial tilt does undergo nutation, a slight irregular motion with a main period of 18.6 years. The orientation rather than the angle of Earth's axis also changes over time processing around in a complete circle over about 25,800 year cycle. This precession is the reason for the difference between a sidereal year and a tropical year. Both of these motions are caused by the varying attraction of the sun and moon of east's equatorial bulge. The poles also migrate a few meters across Earth's surfaces. This polar motion has multiple cyclical components which collectively are termed quasi-periodic motion. In addition to an annual component to this motion, there is a 14-month cycle called the Chandler Wobbler, 
Earth's rotational velocity also varies in a phenomenon known as length of day variation. In modern times, Earth's per perihelion occurs around the 3rd of January and its aphelion around the 4th of July. These dates change over time to precession and other orbital factors which allow cyclical patterns known as Milkanovich cycles. The changing Earth-Sun distance causes an increase of about 6.9% in solar energy reaching Earth at a perihelion relative to aphelion. Because the southern hemisphere is tilted towards the Sun at about the same time that Earth reaches the closest approach to the Sun, the southern hemisphere receives slightly more energy from the Sun than does the northern over the course of the year. This effort is much less significant than the total energy change due to axial tilt, and most of the excess energy is absorbed by the higher proportion of water in the southern hemisphere. A study from 2016 suggests that Planet 9 tilted all solar system planets, including Earth's, by about 6 degrees. <coughs> Okay, this deals with habitability. A planet that can sustain life is called habitable, even if life did not originate there. Earth provides liquid water, an environment where complex organic molecules can assemble and interact in sufficient energy to sustain metabolism. The distance of Earth from the Sun, as well as its orbital eccentricity, rate of rotation, axial tilt, geological history, sustaining atmosphere, and magnetic field all contribute to the current climate conditions at the surface. I'm going to continue with biosphere in a moment. All right, I'm going to go ahead and continue with biosphere now. Biosphere. The planet's life forms inhabit ecosystems whose total is sometimes said to form a biosphere. Earth's biosphere is thought to have begun evolving about 3.5 GYA. The biosphere is divided into a number of biomes, inhabited by broadly similar plants and animals. On land, biomes are separated primarily by differences in latitude, height above sea level, and humidity. Terrestrial biomes lying within the Arctic and Antarctic circles at high latitudes or in extremely arid areas are relatively barren of plant and animal life. Species diversity reaches peak in humid lowlands at equatorial latitudes. In July 2016, scientists reported identifying a set of 355 genes from the last universal common ancestor, LUCA, of all organisms living on Earth. Natural Resources and Land Use Earth has resources that have been exploited by humans. Those terms non termed non-renewable resources such as fossil fuels, fossil fuels only renew over geological timescales. Large deposits of fossil fuels are obtained from Earth's crust consisting of coal, petroleum, and natural gas. These deposits are used by humans both for energy production and as feedstock for chemical production. Mineral ore bodies have also been formed within the crust through a process of ore genesis, resulting from actions of magmatism, erosion, and plate tectonics. These bodies form concentrated sources for many metals and other elements, and useful elements, excuse me. Earth's biosphere produces many useful biological products for humans, including food, wood, pharmaceuticals, oxygen, and the recycling of many organic wastes. The land-based ecosystem depends upon topsoil and fresh water, and the oceanic ecosystem depends upon dissolved nutrients washed down from the land. In 1980, 50.53 million kilometers squared, or 19.51 million square miles, of Earth's land surface consisted of forests and woodlands. 67.88 million kilometers squared, or 26.21 million square miles, was grassland <coughs> and pasture, and 15.01 million kilometers squared, or 5.8 million square miles, was cultivated as croplands. The estimated amount of irrigated land in 1993 was 2,481,250 kilometers squared, or 958,020 square miles. Humans also live on the land by using building materials to construct shelters. Natural environmental hazards. Large areas of Earth's surface are subject to extreme weather such as tropical cyclones, hurricanes, and or typhoons that dominate life in those areas. From eight, 1980 to 2000, these events caused an average of 11,800 human deaths per year. Many places are subject to earthquakes, landslides, tsunamis, volcanic eruptions, tornadoes, sinkholes, blizzards, floods, droughts, wildfires, and other calamities and disasters. 
Many localized areas are subject to human-made pollution of the air and water, acid rain and toxic substances, loss of vegetation, overgrazing, deforestation, desert desertification, loss of wildlife, species extinction, soil degradation, soil depletion, and erosion. There is a scientific consensus linking human activities to global warming due to industrial carbon dioxide emissions. This is predicted to produce changes such as the melting of glaciers and ice sheets. More extreme temperature ranges, significant changes in weather, and global rise in average sea levels. This deals with human geography. Cartography, the study and practice of map making and geography, the study of lands, features, inhabitants, and phenomena on Earth have historically been the disciplines devoted to depicting Earth. Surveying, the determination of locations and distances, and to a lesser extent navigation, the determination of position and direction have developed alongside cartography and geography, providing and suitably quantifying the requisite information. Earth's human population reached approximately 7 billion on the 31st of October 2011. Projections indicate that the world's human po population will reach 9.2 billion by 2050. Most of the growth is expected to take place in developing nations. Human population density varies widely around the world, but a majority live in Asia. By 2020, 60% of the world's population is expected to live in urban rather than rural areas. It is estimated that one-eighth of Earth's surface is suitable for humans to live on. Three-quarters of Earth's surface is covered by oceans, leaving one-quarter as land. Half of the land's area is desert, 14%, high mountains, 27%, and other unsuitable terrains. The northernmost permanent settlement in the world is alert on Ellesmere Island in Nunavut, Canada, 82 degrees by 28 degrees north. The southernmost is the <coughs> Munson Scott South Pole Station in Antarctica, exactly, almost exactly at the South Pole, 90 degrees south. Independent sovereign nations claim the planet's entire land surface, except for some parts of Antarctica, a few land parcels along the Denade River's western bank, an unclaimed area of Bertowil between Egypt and Sudan. As of 2015, there are 193 sovereign states that are members states of the United Nations plus two observer states and 72 dependent territories and states with limited recognition. Earth has never been sovereign government with authority over the entire globe, although some non-states have striven for world domination and failed. The United Nations is a worldwide in intergovernmental organization that was created with the goal of intervening in the disputes between nations, thereby avoiding armed conflict. The UN serves primarily as a form of international diplomacy and international law. When the Census for Membership permits, it provides a mechanism for armed intervention. The first human to orbit Earth was Yuri Gargan on 12th of April 1961. In total, about 487 people have visited outer space and reached orbit as of 30th July 2010, and at least 12 have walked to the moon. Normally, the only humans in space are those who have an are those on the International Space Station. The station's crew, made up of six people, is usually replaced every six months. The farthest that humans have traveled from Earth is 4,171 kilometers or 2,458,655 miles achieved during the Apollo 13 mission in 1970. <coughs> this deals with the moon. The moon is a relatively large terrestrial planet-like natural satellite with a diameter of about one quarter of Earth's. It is the largest moon in the solar system relative to the size of the planet, although Charon is largely relative to the dwarf planet Pluto. The natural satellites of other planets are also referred to as moons after Earth's. Gravitational attraction between the Earth and moon causes tides on Earth. The same effect on the moon has led to its tidal locking. Its rotation period is the same as the time it takes to orbit Earth. As a result, it always presents the same face to the planet. As the moon orbits Earth, different parts of the face are illuminated by the sun leading to the lunar phases. The dark part of the face is separated from the light part of the solar terminator. Due to their tidal interaction, the moon recedes from Earth at the rate of approximately 38 millimeters per annual, or 1.5 inches per year. Over millions of years, these tiny modifications and the lengthening of Earth's day by about 23 US per year <coughs> add up to significant changes. During the Devonian period, for example, approximately 410 MYA, there were 400 days in a year, which, with each lasting about 21.8 hours. 
<coughs> Moon has a dramatically affected the development of life by moderating the planet's climate. Paleontolog paleontological evidence and computer simulations show that Earth's axial tilt is subsidized, stabilized by tidal interaction with the Moon. Some theorists think that without the stabilization against the torques applied by the Sun, the planet's Earth's rotation, equatorial bulge, the rotational axis might be chaotically unstable, exhibiting chaotic changes over millions of years, as appears to be the case for Mars. Viewed from Earth, the Moon is just far away enough to have the same apparent size disk as the Sun. The angular size or solid angle of the two bodies match because, although the Sun's diameter is about 400 times as large as the Moon's, it is also 400 times more distant. This allows total and annual solar eclipses to occur on Earth. The most widely accepted theory of the Moon's orbit origin, the giant impact hypothesis, states that it formed from the collision of Mars-sized protoplanet called Theia within early Earth history. This hypothesis explains, among other things, the Moon's relative lack of iron and volatile elements and the fact that its, com that its composition is nearly identical to that of Earth's crust. This deals with asteroids and artificial satellites. Earth has at least five co-orbital asteroids, including 3,753 Kruth-Ni and 2002 AA-29. A Trojan asteroid companion, 2010-TK-7, is liberate, liberating, vibrating around the leading Lagrange triangular point, L4, in the Earth's orbit around the Sun. Tiny near Earth asteroid 2006 RH sub 120 makes close approaches to the Earth Moon system roughly every 20 years. During these approaches, it can orbit Earth for brief periods of time. As of April 2018, there are 1,886 operational human made satellites orbiting Earth. There are also inoperative satellites, including Vanguard 1, the oldest satellite currently in orbit, and over 16,000 pieces of track space debris. Earth's largest artificial satellite is the International Space Station. And finally, we've got cultural and historical viewpoints. The standard astronomical symbol of Earth consists of a cross circumscribed by a circle, or like a circle with that, representing the four corners of the world. Human cultures have developed many views of the Earth, of the planet. Earth is sometimes personified as a deity. In many cultures, it is the mother goddess that is also the primary fertility deity. And by the mid-20th century, the Gaia principle compared Earth's environments and life as a single self-regulating organism lending to a broad stabilization of the conditions of habitability. Creation myths in many religions involve the creation of Earth by supernatural deity or deities. Scientific investigation has resulted in several cultural transformative shifts in people's view of the planet. Initial belief in the flat earth was gradually replaced in the Greek colony, colonies of southern Italy during the late 6th century BC by the idea of a spherical earth, which was attributed to both the philosophers Pythagoras and Parmen Parmenides. By the end of the 5th century BC, the sphericity of earth was universally accepted among Greek intellectuals. Earth was generally believed to be the center of the universe until 16th century, when scientists first con conclusively demonstrated that it was a moving object, comparable to the other planets in the solar system. Due to the efforts of influential Christian scholars and clerics such as James Usher, who sought to determine the age of the Earth through analysis of genealogical genealogies and scripture, Westerners before the 19th century generally believed Earth to be a few thousand years old at most. It was only during the 19th century that geologists realized Earth's age was at least many millions of years. Lord Kelvin used thermodynamics to estimate the age of Earth to be between 20 million and 400 million in 1864, sparking a vigorous debate on the subject. It was only when radioactivity and radioactive dating were discovered in the late 19th and early 20th century that reliable mechanisms for determining Earth's age was established, proving the planet to be billions of years old. The perception of Earth shifted again in the 20th century when humans first viewed it from orbit and especially with photographs of Earth's return by the, the Apollo program. So anyways, I'm super proud of this tattoo. Um, I'm gonna get it finished tomorrow with the shading, but um, 
I guess that's what I wanted to share with you, was just reading that Wikipedia article and the other articles. If you stayed with me this long through the program that I just did, thank you. Um, maybe you learned a little bit. I'm going to go back and listen to it later just to refresh my memory on it and uh, stuff like that. And, um, yep, it's special to me. So, anyways, have a good one.